Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another great, super cool radio interview. I'm your host, as always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I got some great guests joining me at this time. They're a killer hard rock band from Long Island, New York. Recently, they released a new single entitled All or Nothing. Please welcome Tim and Jenny from Blame Shift. What's up, guys? What's up? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Uh, it's awesome to have you guys on the podcast. I'm excited to yeah, be here. Thank you, man. Thank you. So now we got quite a bit to discuss with the new single, All or Nothing. But before we get to that, I got a fun question I've been asking my guests this season. So uh, if you could have dinner with any two musicians from history, living or deceased, who would they be? <laughs> uh, I think the dead ones are better because, like, you, you, you know, you can't actually really make that happen. So, um, I have mine Jacoby from Papa Roach and Chester Bennington. Nice, what are you yeah. Uh, I don't know, probably like Elvis. Elvis. You get to find out if the guy's really dead or not, you know. <laughs> I'm sure at this point. Tupac. Yeah. <laughs> Tupac, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> but, I mean, that would, you know, solve the uh, the two mysteries if they're still alive or not. So I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Plus, I'm a huge, like, Papa Roach and Lincoln Park fan, so I love those picks as well. So off to a fan set, fantastic start here. <laughs> So now, uh, obviously, a big reason I'm chatting with you guys, the new single All or Nothing has been uh, recently released. Um, so before we start talking about, obviously, we've got the music video, we've got a lot to discuss with that, but how was it writing and recording the new single? It was awesome. Well, we recorded uh, this song with our longtime producer and our friend, Eric Ron, who is very notable in the music scene. Um, and we've been working with him for, like, probably over 10 years now. So uh, we started working with him when he was a little baby producer and we were a little baby band. So we've kind of like grown up together. And um, yeah, we wrote this song actually a few years ago. It took us a little while to to get it out there. Um, but finally it's out. And yeah, we recorded out in North Hollywood. That's where we record out there with Eric at Gray Area Studios. And um, it's always fun, always a good time out there. Um, it's a great experience. Yeah, it's, it's cool working, you know, with him because he's like our good friends who are on like the level of like we could like crack jokes and like be ourselves with him because we've known him forever. Like last the last trip we did to record, we ended up going to, to Las Vegas first for uh my birthday party and then we ended up recording. So it was like, you know, we, we get to kind of hang out on the friend level and then actually like get down and be creative together. And you know, the the studio is never just smooth. It's always like hiccups and trying to work through creative ideas together and um but end of the day you know we always get really good uh a really good product at the end of it and it's a it's a real fun time working with someone who's that talented as well you know yeah well for sure especially i think it makes it you know the process go a little smoother you know since you guys have that kind of friendship uh you know with him that it goes kind of a little bit more smoother you know with recording yeah exactly yeah so we can't wait to go back and do more music with him you know which will hopefully be next year Oh, right on, right on. I know we got definitely got to talk about that before. Um, so like, how long like um, was a song like recorded, written, and recorded compared to like releasing it? <laughs> Actually, a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> so we recorded it out. Um, we recorded it in G uh, January, right before COVID. Um, and then like you know things slowed down in the music business in general for a little while there. And then when uh, things started opening back up, we actually released a different song that we went out there and recorded first, which is called Came for Blood, which you should check out. Um, and then we've been sitting on this one for since then. And finally we are, we were like, we have to get this out. The song's too good. And um, so, yeah, so here it is. <laughs> All right on. So like, um, how does it feel to finally have the song released? Amazing. Yeah, it's, you know, a lot of things get in the way of life as you, uh, you know, just get older and <laughs> just keep living, you know? And, uh, yeah, it was, it was one of those things that we, like, we, 
we knew we wanted to get this song out and like just get ourselves back on the map because we you know on the side we, we started a this jewelry company called strong that we've been like you know actively doing every major music festival and still traveling and being a part of all the music stuff but just not on stage and it kind of uh you know i guess got in the way of us putting out this song because we you know you only have so much time in the day and if you're going to put something out for us it's we want to make sure it's like you know the best the video is done right the, it's all done right so that it represents our band at the level we want to you know put, put product out at so um it did take a while but you know now that we're back into it we're like all right you know once we get back in the zone we're like we gotta go record more we need to start touring and get more dates on the books and and get back into a blame shift world you know oh no for sure i got one more question about all or nothing i do want to talk about your jewelry company as well but um so over the you know the, the process of writing and recording what was like the biggest like edit or change you made to all or nothing before releasing it good question you know that song there wasn't that much like you know some songs we we do some co-writes with eric where like we'll or we'll write from scratch in the studio we'll pick up two acoustic guitars and just like yeah and just yeah. create the song like from uh, just a guitar riff out there you know that for all or nothing um a lot of the arrangement and structure was done coming into it probably i'd say like 85 percent of the track was pre-proed like and uh recorded in our home studio out here in new york and we brought it out there even like a lot of the some of the sampling stuff that we had we even like used directly in that song um and then eric kind of helped uh just make the you know production wise making things sound a lot better and and obviously helping with some of the dynamics of uh of the parts but a lot of it was that particular song a lot of it was written going in from from us which is you know i feel like as we get as we work more and more with different producers and just on our own we you learn to just to write better songs as a artist you know so that's why i think the next step for us writing more music is we're just going to put out better and better songs all right i really enjoy all or nothing i will leave some links for all or nothing in the description of this podcast as well make sure to check it out for everyone watching or listening so i know you guys already mentioned this i do got a couple questions about this as well so uh, your jewelry company, like, um, how'd that get started? And like, um, you know, what, what kind of the products do you guys offer? Yeah, so we started actually on the road. Um, Tim had his strings laying around, broken guitar strings for years and years that I had been seeing. And uh, one day, out of the blue, I just picked them up and started making bracelets out of them and um, started selling them at our shows. And we started selling more of those than we were selling of our CDs and our T-shirts and everything like that. So we're like, okay, this is something special here so we um yeah we realized we had a really cool idea and we took off with it um so the concept is that every bracelet well they're made from guitar strings and then different parts of a guitar string like the ball ends we use for our beaded bracelets and um they're all inspired by different songs so that's the whole concept so every bracelet's inspired by a song so you can chop a whole playlist and it makes it really fun for our customers to, like chop and find your favorite song so it's a really cool unique unique idea and um it's really been been taking off over the last few years so yeah we kind of you know we started it just in the hard rock scene of like the hard rock festivals and you know now we're branching into some of the country uh we make the official bracelet for the cma fest every year now and you know rock and roll hall of fame we partner with so we're doing some cool shit that like i think um next year we have a couple major things happening we, we can't really announce what they are with that but it's going to be next level um things that we're going to be working with with famous artists as well as uh big sporting events as well so oh right on sounds awesome i'm definitely looking forward to uh you know the more new new, new announcements and your partners as well so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh where that goes next year yeah it's gonna be fun well we'll have to hook you up with some free bracelets too check out uh go to our site you know get strung.com <laughs> i might as well plug it anyway but go there and check it out and we'll hook you up with some stuff man i appreciate it man i'll also leave a link for that website in the description of this podcast as well uh so i'm curious like what are some of like, the most popular products from uh strung um probably our most popular bracelet is um a bracelet we we made for when taylor hawkins passed away we did a tribute to him and we made a bracelet called the pretender 
Um, it's inspired by the song Everlong, and it incorporates um, ball ends of a bass guitar string, and then also stones. And the stones are actually Hawkeye stones. So it's really, um, it, it's a unique piece and people love it. And, and we give back to charity with that grace. So we give back with all of our bracelets, but um, to different ones. Um, but yeah, so I think that's definitely been our most popular bracelet we ever put out. For good reason. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, for sure, definitely. And it sounds like it's an amazing bracelet as well. It is. <laughs> yeah, so you'll you have to get that. Oh, one. Yeah, we'll send you one. <laughs> I'm in. I'm definitely. I will rock that at work for sure. No, no <laughs> so doubt. Really you have to be like, which one should I get? Exactly. In, in a nice Basically. <laughs> awesome. Basically. <laughs> All right, so now I do got a few more music questions, and we got some fun questions before we close out this interview. So, um, so all or nothing, like is this the like first new material at least from my research, research that since about twenty twenty one from you guys, I want to say, um, yeah. will there be more new music uh, in the future in the near future? Yes, yeah, so we have another. When we did this recording session, we did three songs. And we were putting them out as singles, you know. So we had uh, "Came for Blood," "All or Nothing" just came out, and then we have a third song out of those those three tracks that we did uh, in in that session that we're going to be putting out. Um, probably do another video for it. Um, you know, the the goal is to try to get some momentum from the, these these new songs, some radio traction, some online traction, and then get get our asses back on tour. And even you know, we're doing like a a quick U.S. run through the Midwest and hitting a lot of our our bigger cities that we've played over the years, you know. So, yeah, that, that's kind of the game plan. We'll see what happens with everything, and then um, after that, you know, recording new music is definitely. Uh, we're gonna write a lot this winter when it's cold as hell in New York. We're gonna go into our basement studio that we built here and, and uh, do some writing. So, all right, I'm definitely. I'm, I'm from the Midwest, so like I totally know about winter time. Like it's. Not fun. I stay. I stay inside a lot because I'm not going outside. <laughs> yeah, you, you hibernate like a bear, so you might as well be creative, you know. And exactly, exactly. exactly. Especially, you know, obviously with the home studio, very nice and you know convenient for you guys. And I, I would assume warm as well compared to the outside. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I did want to talk about the music video for All or Nothing that was recently released as well. So how was it like um, filming the music video and developing the concept for it? Um, we were just talking about this in an interview we did yesterday. We actually came up, we were like racking our brains trying to think of something to, you know, like an idea off the song. Um, and, you know, for a, a lot of our videos, we do like have full on like production where there's, um, a lot of like characters and like a whole like script and everything like that. And we decided that that wasn't the way we wanted to go on this. We wanted it to be more like imagery and um, just like more like using your imagination and also just look a little more simple. So um, we came up with the idea while we were taking a walk around a lake and we were trying to like, we had a million different ideas yeah. and then we solidified our idea during this walk. And <laughs> the, the thought process I had, we were there was like this major high, a highway right across from like on the edge of the lake, and you know like final destination when you think of like someone thinks what's going to happen and then it happens. You know, I had this like thought like imagine this car came off his exit and plowed through the fence and like ended up in the lake in front of us. You know, like a, a standard uh, you know thought a normal person would have. So <laughs> from from that. Like we started talking about that idea of like, you know, thinking something's going to happen. And then it turned into like the video idea where, you know, Jenny has the, the brain uh, sensors on her head. And like, you know, it, it, it's a sim simple version of like, you know, using your brain thoughts to actually manipulate the future, which was like in the video, you know, you see like the lights are controlled by Jenny and like, but it's just, it's a very simple idea. And we wanted to like not overthink what the video was gonna, how it was gonna translate. Cause yeah. it's, it's really, uh, you know, sometimes you, you put too much into a video and it gets confusing for the person who's watching it. Like yeah. every band wants to tell this whole story, but like, it's honestly really difficult to tell a, a story in a three, three minute, minute and 30 video. second yeah. video. That's, you know, so the simplicity is kind of the route we went with it. And uh, 
yeah, that's that's how the whole idea came about. So more visual than anything. Yeah. Oh, no, right on. I, I like the backstory about it. You know, completely normal thoughts to have while walking around a lake. But uh, yeah. I, uh, but no, I, I love the final product of the music video. I think it, it tells a great story. And it is simplistic, but also it, it tells the whole story in the amount of time that you guys have for the song as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks. So, uh, some curious for you guys. So, obviously, there's been some, you know, obviously, you guys have other music videos you guys have produced, you know, um, as well. So, like, well, what is, like, uh, your favorite music video that uh, you guys have? So, I think it's probably Secrets. Probably Secrets. Yeah. Like, that, that video was, like, you know, it was really in a, uh, a very cool spot for our band because it was, like, we were living on the road for, like, 200 days a year on our bus. And, we got the opportunity while we were on tour through Kentucky to, we rented out this old mansion that has been abandoned for like 50 years. And we got permission from the city to actually go in there and open it up. It was all boarded up. And uh, it was in like, what, Lewisburg, Kentucky? Yeah, or, it was like a small like, little town in Kentucky. And this house had been like used for like ghost hunters and stuff. Um, and it was it, it was haunted. It was, and, and, the, and the video was about like a haunted experience and the house was actually haunted and it was it was crazy like the whole town came out it was a really tiny town like the mayor came out to like with fire trucks and, yeah, yeah like was... to see like to see that we were shooting there and like um it was it was definitely interesting yeah, and we... we filmed into the night and it was actually scary yeah it was it was <laughs> if you watch the video it's, yeah, yeah watch the video you'll see, the, you see the house and like the in everything was shot inside the house mm -hmm. and uh we lived in our bus on that property yep. for like three, we shot it in like three day time span, but we would, none of us would sleep inside the house. We all just slept yeah. in our typical oh, tour wow. bus and, <laughs> but in the driveway there, you know? Um, and the old owner who owned that house in the past used to own wild turkey, the, the bourbon whiskey, you know? And uh, so like, that's how he got his money from like making like first, boot, I think bootlegging whiskey in the beginning. We just had a lot of cool history. It was very cool. So. Definitely sounds like an awesome experience, and yeah, I definitely I wouldn't sleep uh, overnight at that mansion either. Like I'm, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's really cool. So, like, how did how did you guys make the connection to like film at that location? I think the producer we used at the time um, had a connection. Like, we knew we wanted to shoot it in like an old, like an old house or like something like that. And he, I think it was on like. I think it was, was on, like, yeah, yeah. It was on like a website where, um, like, you were allowed. You other people had rented this location out, like a location scouting site or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it was perfect. <laughs> it was perfect for what we wanted to do. Yeah, definitely sounds. I'm definitely gonna check out that uh, music video. I'll also leave a link yeah. for that in the description as <laughs> well. So. Uh, just, I got a couple more fun questions. I'll be wrapping this up soon, but, uh, so for you guys, I know you guys haven't like toured or performed in a little bit, but I'm curious for you guys. I ask this question quite frequently in my podcast. So, um, what is your favorite song to perform live? Um, probably. Uh, mine is tell me it's all right. Yeah. We always have the same answers on everything. Yeah. yeah. Tell me it's all right. It's a really high energy. Check it out. It's a really high energy song. Um, usually we close our set with it and um, it's awesome. Yeah, it feels like uh, like the song like fits very well for like an ending of our yeah. set. Like, we try to have the set progress where like, you, you know, you captivate the audience, you get them in and, mm -hmm. and feel the energy of what the, the band's about and then close it out with a song that like wants them leaving a little bit more. And that yeah. song always like, for us, like, you know, you know, if we get an encore, we have another song in, in the work, but it always wants us, like, like that's why we want to play on stage when, once we finish that song. It's like, exactly. that, that's what it's about, yeah. Exactly. All right, Ryan, definitely, it's a very high energy song, awesome song to close out with, so I definitely, awesome song, I highly agree. <laughs> so also, for you guys, so uh, I know you guys have toured very extensively in the past. What is, like, uh, the coolest or most unique uh, venue or show you performed at? I don't know. We have a, we have a lot. I um, think I think mine would be um, we played Warp Tour uh, under the Golden Gate Bridge, 
on the Pier 56, I think it was. So, and our stage was right next to uh, the other, the main stage. And uh, Bullet for My Valentine was playing right next to us. As soon as they finished, they actually waited for us to start because they wanted like, us to draw it. Like they had a crowd of like, you know, probably 15,000 people or so. And, mm-hmm. and as soon as in the setting, we were under the bridge, which was incredible, you know. And then as soon as they finished their last note, like, thank you, we're Bullet for My Valentine. And they're off. We just start making noise. Like I'm, our drummer just starts going crazy on the cymbals, and we start like, you know, calling people over before we start, and we had like thousands of people just pack our stage, and that for me that was probably like a, a moment that was like, you know, this yeah. is this is awesome. Yeah, I agree with that. I also we we played um we played a really cool show. Um, it was only a few songs. It was at this. It was a crazy opportunity, but we played at the American Airlines Arena in Miami, um, for like the entire arena of people. Um, and I got that, that was probably one of something that we'll never forget. It wasn't a typical show, but it was, yeah, we, we opened for Jamie Foxx and then we, <laughs> we pre party with like, uh, fat Joe and like, it was like, yeah, yeah it was, like, it's long story, but it was cool. just playing on that stage was incredible. It, it definitely sounded like that was both, both awesome experiences, but, uh, yeah, definitely very unique in their own right, you know, with the settings exactly. and like what was going on. So I like it. I like it. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So now as I am, uh, starting to close out this interview, I got to talk about, so what, what is 2024 looking like for blame shift? Definitely going to write more music and definitely going to do a an- release another single that we already have recorded and do a music video for that song. That is definitely happening. Totally yeah. recording, getting to the studio and doing some more music as well. And I, I know like our, um, we're working with our, our agent right now to get us on some of these festivals. So like we're hoping to get into some of the, like since we're already at the festivals with you know sponsoring them from our company, we're trying to kind of work it where we get to play a few of them as well. So hopefully, you know, some of the big ones like, you know, welcome to Rockville, Louder Than Life. Uh, we're gonna try to work our band, hopefully under some of those, um, if not smaller festivals, but you know, that's kind of, it's, it's crazy. You could play one festival in front of, you know, 10, 15,000 people, but then you got to tour for 30 days to get in front of that same crowd because right. you know, it's, it's easier to hit mass people in just one show. And instead of like grinding it day after day. So it's kind of our, our thing is like, try to like, just get the most exposure in the least amount of time. You know, that it is, you know, there's definitely like a like a balance with it, but also it's like you have to you gotta get the big festivals, but also you have to get to the big festivals, which is always not you know always easy. So there definitely there's a lot go you know a lot to think uh, think about and like put in the work to do it as well. Absolutely. Yeah, it's always planning, you know. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so now for everyone watching and listening, like where are the best places to find Blame Shift online? Um, you can find us on Spotify. That's always a great place to start. Um, all of our music, you can hear every song we've ever put out right there. Also, YouTube, we have all our videos there, Secrets, Ghost, Game for Blood, um, and our newest one, All or Nothing. Um, and then our Instagram is at Blameshift, and we're still on Facebook. I don't know if people still do that, but we do. Uh, we're at Blameshift there as well. And, uh, yeah, that's, and anywhere else you listen to music, Apple Music, or um, anywhere else you listen to music. Right on. I will leave uh, all the links for Blame Shift and All or Nothing in the description of this podcast. Jenny and Tim, thank you so much for stopping by Super Cool Radio. I had a great time chatting with you guys. Yes, yeah, man. Thank you so much. For having we, we appreciate us. it. Of course, of course. For Jenny and Tim of Blame Shift, I'm your host always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty. <laughs>